the Jeep Talk Show. Now, two episodes a week. What? Two episodes? Okay. Yes, that's right. Two. Are you excited? I'm always excited when it comes out on Friday. It's actually a go-to podcast that I can actually listen to while I'm getting over to work or on my way home. New episodes every Friday and early Monday morning and time for your commute. You're listening to a 4x4 Radio Network Podcast. Are you ready? It's the Jeep Talk Show with Wendy. There will be body damage. Jeep Mama. Are you sure? Josh. Yeah, I don't think so. And Tony. I think that's a huge deal. So sit back, strap in, and brace yourself. Well, hi ho it's time for another episode of the Jeep Talk Show Roundtable, and this is basically where we just have a, a free-for-all discussion with everybody in the uh, Zoom meeting. If you don't know how to join the Zoom meeting, it's really simple. Just go over to jeeptalkshow.com slash newsletter and sign up for our newsletter. You'll get the information every week and uh, how to uh, sign up uh, to uh, get that newsletter, and you'll get a link about how to join our, uh, our, our, our meeting, our Zoom meeting and become an official Zoom people. So I want to start off, even before I uh, bring the Zoom people in here, I want to start off by giving you guys a spoiler warning. This is a spoiler alert. So if you don't want to be tainted by a lot of Jeep Talk Show Texas event that happened on September 18th, uh, you might want to just put this one, this episode on hold until you've listened to uh, the, uh, the, the formal, the regular uh, Jeep Talk Show episodes uh, <laughs> coming up later. Uh, well, we record it later, but you'll hear it. Be, uh, you'll hear it later than uh, than this one. So, anyway, with that, we're going to bring in the uh, the Zoom people. Heidi Ho, Zoom people, thank you for joining us tonight. It looks like we got Larry, Jeep, and Mo, uh, Steve O, uh, John Lee, uh, Patrick Wheel Northeast, uh, Andrew P, and Bill W. Thank you guys for joining us tonight. How you awesome. doing? And I say us, I mean me. <laughs> Get into those habits. Of John, that. we can barely see you. You're like a like a, like like a, like a ghost a, image. It's like a black blob. Yeah, I, I don't have my... Uh, I got that little privacy thing on and I wasn't outside yet, so I'll put it up in a second. You know, you could wait till you're done in the bathroom. I was going to say, mute the mic before you flush, dude. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I had it. I had it. Got caught by my neighbor outside who was trying to have me explain the difference between oh, DSL and cable. <laughs> hey, hey, John! What happened to you in the pictures? I, I was looking at some of the pictures after I got back on uh, on Sunday uh, and Monday, and I didn't see you in the pictures. Were you uh, strategically no, no, no. placing yourself out of uh, Actually, out of photograph range or vampire? I don't know. I've looked at all of, all of the ones Jimmy. I mean, Jimmy had like what like a hundred of them in his in, that his wife took that day, and I was either leading and he was tail gunning, or on the last trail he led and I was tail gunning. So that meant I was nowhere near. Anywhere she was taking the pictures, I haven't well, seen well, I mean, even the, yet. I haven't seen even in the group pictures. I didn't see you in the group pictures. Oh, I had to go take a piss. I was like literally inside using the restroom. Look behind the tree, <laughs> and, then, and then I come back outside, and everybody was like, "Oh, we already took the picture." I'm like, so okay. I'm probably going to have to take uh, uh, pay somebody extra for those uh, those pictures of you in the bathroom. Okay. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> I, uh, I know. I think Chris I know has some good photos of all of John and I since we were up front. All right. <laughs> well, I anyway, just, I just want to let you know, know. I just want to know you were missed. I, I didn't see you there, and I was like, "Holy hell, this guy was leading the group, and he was a reluctant leader, by the way." <laughs> yeah, I think I got. I, I stopped my reluctance a little bit later when I realized I didn't have to eat dust all day because when I was oh, tailgating yeah. on open TRO, I was like, you know. <laughs> There's something to be said for not driving through nothing but dust all day long. So. I thought a fog cloud had moved in uh, behind Andrew because it was so <laughs> thick at times. It, it literally looked look, literally looked like a big fog bank. Yeah, it was it was bad. I mean, there was there were I think at one point on that last trail we came up in this one section. I don't know if it was Lacey or somebody come on the radio and said, "I think I just drove through a dust devil." Like it was uh, yeah. like a <laughs> dust tornado, and she didn't have her doors on. So like it went right into the side of her of her cheap with no doors. Well, I felt bad for uh, for Greg uh, from Underground Graphics because he uh, he actually stored his uh, his front doors into in the uh, the bunkhouse that we had, and I th- I was thinking about all those people that didn't have doors with that dust. Yeah, well, I was saying it when we met last time. I was like, 
I went doorless the first time because there was a little bit of rain. There was no way I was going doorless in September. Oh, that's right. You did. You were doorless, and that's whenever you got there. Uh, you got there late, uh, so you actually didn't have the uh, the several hours of no uh, no dust because it was uh, it was pretty nice uh, when we first started getting out there around. Uh, I think we left at nine a.m. and hit I the trails around nine. I wasn't that late because I think I caught up with y'all like right there on North Pole. So I mean, it was pretty early. Okay, well maybe you got more of it, uh, more of the uh, no dust. But by noon, it was getting dusty again. Mm-hmm. All right, so I know I asked you guys several times in person, and I, I apologize for being needy and asking you, how are you having a good time? But uh, tell the folks, how was the how was the event? I mean, we had I thought we had a great turnout. I really appreciate all you guys do, coming out there. And uh, John uh, was uh, leading the group, as as we mententioned. Uh, Andrew was uh, uh, passing out uh, uh, passing out uh, stickers. Must be uh, football night. We even got a, a sticker on a Toyota and a Rat Bastard sticker on a Toyota. So, uh, you know. Yeah, but the Toyota has a beat on the front of that. Right. Well, I don't know who did that, but I couldn't find the new Bronco because I tried to tag the new Bronco with the Jeep sticker too. But it was, it was it was really clean in the parking lot. I don't think he actually hit the trails. I don't <laughs> think so either. You know, um, Chris, Chris was uh, someplace today uh, doing a uh, – uh, some sort of out at some event, and he didn't get to drive uh, v, uh, drive the Bronco, but he got to ride in one. I think that's what he told me. Hopefully, he'll show up. Yeah, well, uh, he's. Um, I can't wait to see the pictures because uh, I remember when uh, we first got to the top of Babyback, he was riding with us, and he hopped out like right then and took his first picture as we were going down. I'm like, maybe it'll be one that I'm in. <laughs> Wait, there's a story about the YJ. Some, though, somehow, so. somehow, John just like got excluded out of every picture my wife took. I think because she'd hop out whenever we'd stop, and he'd already be over the obstacle by the time she'd get up to the front of the line. Yeah, he was still in privacy mode. Hey, hey, Jimmy, what was? Uh, <laughs> tell us about Guy, the 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 YJ, uh, the crazed yes. YJ uh, <laughs> driver, <laughs> the legend. So yes. we go to go, we go to go to the falls and and we're just starting up and the group's like what 16, 17 jeeps and I'm tail gunning so I'm all the way at the back and I I, I can only see two two jeeps in front of us because there's dust and all of a sudden the dust cloud kind of settled down and I think guy didn't know where they want because I think he was distracted doing something I'm like okay this is like I know we have to go down this little little riverbed so I'm like okay we'll go left yeah left and we went left and it was the wrong way. So we go down a little way. I'm like, oh, this isn't the right play- direction. I remember it. it looks wrong. So I tell us to turn around and I'm like, just follow me back. So I go over this little lip and then Don goes over the little lip with me and he's in a Rubicon uh, JL and I'm in my, my JK, you know, with all, all my suspension. And he, I think he followed our line and it just threw him. He just popped right over on his side. And all I do is I had just turned straight to go back down and I could, I saw out of my passenger side view mirror. All I saw was the, the wheel on the, on the, the YJ just go flat up in the air. I was like, Oh crap. He flipped. <laughs> so I cut the wheels hard as he could floored up the, the closest ramp and went ripping back over to him. And he was just hitting his bearings or whatever. And he was fine. He, he got like a minor cut on the back of his elbow. I think he had a couple, he didn't even damage his windshield. Um, frame, and he got a couple dings on his roll bar, so it wasn't too bad. Um, I just made sure I, I needed another Jeep there to winch because I wanted to make sure it didn't fall back over. I didn't want to try one point because we didn't have a good play, a good way to get a diagonal pull on the back, the back bumper. So I pulled from the side, and and my friend Lacey pulled backwards. So you guys will have to correct me. And by the way, thank you uh, as well, Jimmy, for being a tail gunner and, and, and you know, chiming in out there as a, a volunteer for the group. Uh, but you guys, I haven't been wheeling that often, so a, a lot of this is new to me. But whenever a, a, a vehicle flops and uh, it's at the uh, near the back of it, isn't it the tail gunner's responsibility uh, if the flop occurred? Well, you said he was following him, so. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't so, want to correct uh, I mean, he didn't know where we were going, so I had turned around. I turned. It was <laughs> I had Don, Don, the uh, uh, guy, and Don were in front of me. So I'm like, okay, you guys follow me till we get back to the group. I can keep track of two cars, two jeeps behind me. But did he so, have a video? I don't it know. Bo- it was a bow thing that he had tuned. <laughs> <laughs> Although. 
That's uh, that, real quick funny story. Uh, a guy actually came up to me uh, right after the drivers meeting after we had mentioned that we were going to be on GMRS channel sixteen, and he he had his bowfang in his hand and he said, did, "What what channel did you say that was?" And I said, "Channel 16. And he goes, "That's the weather channel on my radio." <laughs> and I had to explain, "No, no, no. Yeah, that may be because the bowfang can have channels, you know, stuff you've programmed into it for certain channels." But ours is a, is a GRMS uh, 16. Let me tell you what the frequency is. So I got him on the frequency, and he got it punched in, which was pretty damned amazing because he was able to program up that, that bowfang within, you know, 15 seconds. He had it in, and we were uh, right back and forth. So if you guys aren't familiar with that, if, unless you have a, an honest-to-goodness GMRS radio, the, uh, the channels aren't going to align like, you know, what we, we say on the driver's meeting. And actually, we need uh, to, I need to remember that next time so people will, will know. That's, that also explains why he never responded to anyone on it, because he wasn't supposed to. Well, we, no. we Oh, yeah, yeah, that's true. <laughs> You're not supposed to use those both things on GMRS. Yeah, illegal. <laughs> not, like, well, yeah. not like all the things that happened in, in the mid to late 70s on CB weren't illegal, and they just said, eh, yeah. okay, fine, you guys go ahead. <laughs> and, 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 he was, he was, and, and he was an older guy. He said he was 61, and he'd only had his Jeep since, I think he said, like, October or yeah, November December. of last year. About a year. December, December yeah. of last year. He got, a, he got a December of 20. In fact, when we were behind him on that last trail, Chuck, the guy that was with me, he noticed that his taillights were on upside down, like the lenses. So, the, like, the reverse was on the bottom, right, on the YJ that's supposed to be on the top. Yeah. And so, every time he hit the brakes, white light was coming out of the back of <laughs> <laughs> he's like, man, a cop's going to bust you for that. Look at uh, Andrew in front of you because the TJ had kind of a similar light setup. So we got out on the trail while we were waiting on y'all to go at that last stop. We pulled out a, a little quick power st- screwdriver and we put the tail lights around for him on the trail. So he was I anticipating see. a flop is uh, is basically what you're saying because he had the the, uh, he, the, <laughs> the lenses well, on you upside down. A, you missed on on on, on uh, uh, TRO. I mean, like he was. Fearless. The last obstacle, no one. Th- Andrew had already turned around to yank him out, and he just pounded that thing through that last obstacle. Well, when we were going down there, because before you got up to that that spot where he, you know, made his legend, before you get to that point, there was actually a ledge at the bottom of that hill that you had to get up first. Yeah. And so Josh and I were walking down, and Josh leaned over. He's like, "There's no way." He's open, open. There's no way. And then right right about that time, we both had to kind of jump out of the way because he was coming. <laughs> he, he was like, what I lack in lockers, I'll make up for in throttle. And <laughs> that's exactly what he did. Well, and that's the thing is I think because he, he had the 2.5, he really only has one throttle setting, full or none. Because that, that 2.5, I had the, two point, the, the 88 2.5 because my first Jeep was a, an MJ, an 88 MJ. And that 2.5, they don't even offer it with, they didn't offer it with a, with AC because it didn't have enough power. <laughs> yeah, that was so a it, horrible, go. horrible engine. Oh, no go. That's it. But at least I will say, I mean, when he, when he all righted it, right, I know you, you pulled the distributor off and cycled it a few times or whatever, and the, mm-hmm. or the, at least the connection to it. And then when you popped it back on, I mean, it fired up almost instantaneously. Like there wasn't, he wasn't sitting there cranking, and we both commented, "No smoke, right?" But now later on, when he was trying to take that bypass, when we were talking about how he was hopping it or whatever, I don't know what happened there, but we had smoke everywhere coming out of the back of that thing. You know, by the time he actually made it over to the bypass section after he hopped those holes or whatever. Oh, look! Look at look at Larry's. Uh, he's got there it you on go. the screen. Oh yeah, that's that's one of the shots trying to go up that. Oh, oh my goodness, Jesus! <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> there you go. Sounds it all. That's a, that. That's yeah. just like the teaser of the video, right there. Is <laughs> that the start? That's, <laughs> that should be the thumbnail. You can hear everybody going, "Whoa!" <laughs> <laughs> I was I, at that moment. I was having a good nap. Yeah, that last obstacle was fun. That, that was probably my favorite part of the day. Um, getting up there, Lacey was great at spotting. Like whenever I came up, it yeah, she did a good job. I, like I don't even like I didn't. Here was the funny thing. I started bragging. I didn't stall it once going up that hill. Kind of follow the line that she put me on. Got to the top of those ledges. Got up both of them. And I was telling Chuck, the guy with me, I was like, "Man, I didn't stall it once." Oh, uh, we go up down the trail just a little bit further, and it was like a smaller ledge to climb up. I had left it in third gear and I stalled it. And I was like, "God, it, it was like a six-inch ledge too." It was, it was. I was like, "That's what I get for running my mouth." So. <laughs> 
<laughs> yeah, I killed mine a couple times. Jim did a good job getting me up, but I still killed her a couple times. <laughs> was yeah, it was it was just enough. <laughs> left. It was just a big enough ledge if you went up straight the way that John and and Larry and I and all went. Um, that if you didn't have thirty fives, Don just totally turtled himself on there. Oh, he did. Um, we could like move it back if we like pivot on the skip plate. Kind of right. Trick. Ouch. <laughs> It was, it was uh well he was on 33 so he's just just not enough and he was he's new to it so he doesn't really get you know the the break that double pedaling so you can get your your revs up so he could bump better um so he just he 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 got close i mean he got really close to making it but he just didn't get the getting to the throttle fast enough to do enough of a bump to go up and i understand that you're always scared to bump when you get when you start getting used to it there's a lot of rocks yeah. i bet josh was yeah. Sore as all get out the next day because he was running up and down that obstacle, right? And just trying to spot everybody uh, at the bottom and throwing rocks and everywhere. I mean, when Andrew was trying to go through, I think, I think I was carrying rocks. Josh was carrying rocks. <laughs> we must have put like 10 of them down there. So what was that? Uh, that uh, Was it Bull Run that we went up backwards? Instead of coming down Bull Run, we went up Bull no, Run? Boss Hog. Boss, Boss Hog. Hog. Boss Hog. Yeah, so, the only people who did Bull Run were Jimmy and uh, Lacey. Okay. So on Boss Hog, I remember uh, after we had all gotten up there, and I think it was the black uh, Gladiator, uh, diesel Gladiator that was a stock on 33s, no lift on 33s, uh, got stuck. Uh, <laughs> Josh takes off down the hill, and literally on every uh, six-inch ledge uh, of a rock, he was jumping off like a superhero. The only thing he didn't do was put his, his hand down for that superhero landing. <laughs> I mean, literally would just fire himself off there. Whee! <laughs> I saw him do it twice, and I thought, man, I wish I had that kind of energy. I didn't have that that much energy when I was 20. <laughs> he was doing a lot of spotting on that trail. I got, I sent on the Discord, I put one of the pictures um, where he was helping that lady in the red Rubicon that was in front of you, uh-huh. uh, Boss Hog. And so he was trying to spot for her, and then you could see the Yurid Gladiator kind of parked sideways with the logo. And then all the way in the way back top corner, I even tagged you specifically in that spot, Jimmy. All the way at the top, you can see there's the tail gunner, and it's it's like so far oh, yeah. away over the tree line down the hill. Yeah. <laughs> well, you saw it when uh, I, well, I don't guess I don't know if you saw it or not when she tagged that tree, that tree that was right there on that uh, first ledge. Your she video was the first time I saw it. She she made that thing bounce. It was uh, it was really good, but really just kind of got got kind of shiny on the uh, the the rear bed uh, sliders and the bumper. So. Uh, no big damage though. He, <laughs> her husband or boyfriend or whatever was talking about. That's okay. That's okay. We won't get a bumper on there like yours. <laughs> we'll take care of it that way. <laughs> yeah, waiting for the gentleman who had that black gladiator who was he was stock all the way on the thirty threes. Then we had to pull him off of that that one hill there. Oh yeah. Right after the falls, he was he was turtled both directions. We almost couldn't get. We had to. We had to winch them sideways, so Josh yeah. got the... Yeah, you were sliding really bad forward, even trying to winch him with wheel chocks in. Yeah. Well, we were trying to yank him over for a while, because he was all the way up against the tree. He couldn't really go either direction. So, uh, you know, Josh was helping us get, get him, you know, back on trail and back on track, and it, that took a while. What did you guys think? It was because uh, no lift, uh, 33s, or was it the additional weight of the uh, the diesel engine? I think it was the rock sliders. Right? He had some really beefy rock sliders on there, uh-huh. and no lift. It kind of really ah. changed the break over right there, because they stick down a little bit further than yeah. they, like the ruby rails. Oh, were they? Yeah, because he looked. He had some really nice sliders on it, right? And I was like, man, those would have been awesome. If you put them on with three inches of lift or something, just along with it, because they kind of hung down on the sides. They kind of looked like they were just jamming in right there. But it wasn't. Rock. It wasn't steps, though. It was uh, proper rock sliders. No, they were. Pro- they looked like proper rock sliders. Okay. When I put them, so hey, some steps are proper rock sliders too. Well, if you have drop down steps, then you're more likely to get hung up on something. That's the reason why no, I was no. asking. Not everyone has fancy down. steps like Larry. God, like those, are, opens the those door. are my stimulus steps <laughs> oh that's that's what uh uncle sam bought or whatever from the- that's why i call them stimulus steps <laughs> uncle joe i was always interested in those things when i saw you out there wheeling whether or not they could take a real impact 
because of the, all the moving parts and everything of coming out and everything. They seem to do pretty good, though. You weren't taking it easy on them. Well, there's a skid plate that goes over the outside of them as well. But without the skid plate, I think you could probably, I think you could probably hurt them. But unless you really got a rock that poked up inside of there, I mean, you could slide all over on them. Is that those really expensive ones that uh, the that we were talk? I was talking bad about, and uh, uh, they actually reached out about doing an interview. Uh, I can't remember the yeah. name of the company now. They're like two Rock two slide. grand or something. Is that what it is? Where they have this th- well, the piece of metal that drops down, magnetic sensor in the door. So when you open the door, it it knows to drop the thing down. Is that is that it? Is that we right? can we can talk about the price, but yeah, that's it. Yeah, okay. they're, they're pretty proud of their product. Matter of fact, that episode was airing when you were talking about that as my as they were being shipped in. <laughs> so Lacey just commented uh, here in uh, the Facebook Live. She says uh, he was hung up under the undercarriage, not the sliders. Ah. Well, I, you can't really tell when I was just walking by, but nah, he was dragon belly pan. Either way, it was a it was a long recovery or a long stop. It was a it, it was a Rubicon, right? So he he had good. Uh, no. Oh, really? No, no. Huh? No, that was just a. Uh, it was a Sierra. Sierra, you mean? Because I'm, lo- I'm looking at the picture right now. It was a, it was just a Sierra, so it didn't really have. The extra lift, or you know, he probably—I'm guessing there was nothing was locked on it, right? No, the Sierra doesn't have any of that stuff. Doesn't no, sir. So there's a and, and they, they really Gladiator? have that wrinkly the, the 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 skid pan underneath it, and the the transfer case crossbar is kind of ledgy too, um, even on the Rubicon. And that's what really was hanging up Don later. So it, it, it's hard to get over stuff once you get hung on the pan. You have to have the momentum to just push past it. Yeah, because I got rid of all the, a lot of those belly pans under mine, and it's all aluminum panels under it now because of just that. I've had it out before and got a rock stuck forward, of just behind the engine, forward of the, the uh, T-case slider, and I was stuck both directions. I could hardly go into Finally, I just forced the you know over it so you say sierra is that we i thought we were talking about the black gladiator yes yes well it's whatever, it's, it's whatever the sierra is right i don't remember i know that that sahara. has sierra whatever what, well, what okay. is it there's there's a different name for the gladiator version of that yeah it's overland is it overland overland could be. Uh, well, that's one. There's uh, Freedom, Willie's, 80th Anniversary, Sport S, Willie's Sport. It wasn't a sport because, you know, this has the chrome inserts in the grill. Cause I can see the grill on my screen right now. So I guess it's probably the Overland Edition, which, kind of, which is kind of like the Sierra version of, in, in a Wrangler. Ah, uh, okay. I know yeah, somebody was, somebody's going to be screaming at their phone going, there is no Sierra Gladiator. So I thought that would be. Did you see her dummy? <laughs> <laughs> he kept, uh, Lacey c- continues, she says, uh, he kept uh, sliding over and getting a root stuck in the wheel well. Oh, that'll do it. Uh, between the rear of the tire and the fender. Wow, that's not good. Nope. I had no problems <laughs> going up that thing. I, it was the, I thought that was uh, pretty wild. I, I think he just got too far left on the line to begin with because if, if you stayed just a little bit more to the right of where he was, you could sneak up it pretty easily. But I think he just got too far left and just got hung up. Well, it may have, been, angle. may have been uh, concerned about that tree. I think I heard somebody come on the radio. Somebody said, you know, like aim for the tree, hit the tree. Uh, that type of thing. You get it real close to the tree, and that's what I did. So, although watching <laughs> watching the lady in the red gladiator bump that uh, that tree, I was like, "Eh, well, I got a good bumper." So let's see what happens. Now, hers was a Rubicon, wasn't it? Because we got to the top, and Josh was spotting her up. I so she think to a tree so. Up there as well. She had the factory uh, uh, rear uh, bed. Uh, sliders, whatever those things are called. So uh, that's kind of a Rubicon feature, unless it was put on uh, later. Yeah, we had to use a snatch block and and actually pull them sideways to get them off of it in order to lower them back down and yank them back up the hill. There was was definitely some recovery 
uh, action going on, right? With the YJ <laughs> flip, with the gladiator stick. I mean, it was it was interesting. And it was funny, too. I kept saying, oh, it's just a two-diamond. Just a two-diamond. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, the correct we direction. Did. Yeah, going down, <laughs> it's a two-diamond. Whatever I, it is, going up. I thought More, going up was pretty fun. I, I, I like going up better than going down that that one. It's just... A little bit more challenging. So, Jimmy, it, 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 down. Jimmy, is it too boring for you to be out there with all us uh, folks with uh, uh, normal size uh, tires and lifts? No, I just take the hard lines. Good. I know that's what you did last time, but um, hopefully, it was uh, not uh, not too bad for you. Well, you I really forward. enjoy I really enjoy the part of um, getting new people out to wheel and enjoy their jeeps. I mean, I've been a lifelong jeeper. I've had like my first vehicle was a Jeep. I mean, aside from a couple of years where I had, you know, Ford pickups, I mean, I, I've had Jeeps my entire life and not being able to use it my entire time. I'm fairly new to off-roading, honestly, in rocks because I'm from Illinois and there's no place to go out there. And when I was younger, I didn't have the funds to go, you know, three states away and go off-roading. Right. Um, and being able to go out, even though my rig is so well built, I can go out with people that have no idea what they're doing and I can look them in the face and say, don't worry. I'll get you out. We just need to get you in. And as long as, you know, I can be like, I, I, I have the skill to know I can get you into something. And the only thing I, I can not guarantee is if you have like the side steps or, or steps on your Jeep. Cause I had a buddy that had a jail, I took him first time ever rough roading in his jail with the, the, the plastic steps. Those things don't even have metal attaching them to the body panels. Yeah. It's nope. a full plastic step. I call him Tupperware. And, yeah. And so he he had the best time. And he was I told him before we left, I'm like, those things are gonna be toast. As long as you're okay with that, I'm happy to take you. I will keep your, your body safe. And I've done that with a couple other friends too. Bodyguard. They call that trail clearance. <laughs> don't make guarantees. <laughs> no, it was, it was, uh, there was plenty of line options too out there, right? I mean the trails we went mm -hmm. down. Like even even on um, the Boss Hog, I mean it wasn't extreme lines, but the shells got tougher as you went to the right, so you could take the hard line. So you had options. Yeah, well, sure. the hard line on Boss Hog was. I just kind of Hard, what drove harder. Up harder. So what was the hill's name with a YJ flip? Was that baby back or what was that? It was that was just a an offshoot trying to get down into the vaults, right? That, that was, wasn't even a trail. That's it was, well, that's, that was the problem. The that's for all of us that were at the uh, at the falls, and the word came through that the uh, the the YJ flopped. Everybody's like in, almost in unison. How we just came through there? How? <laughs> well, see, I, I just came across that again because I remember we were out there. I heard something out, something flopped, and then I heard, "Well, she can drive it out of that. She does it all the time." I'm like, okay. <laughs> and we just kept going and all of a sudden i passed you guys on the way back when you guys are turned around saying you're going to go try to get it you know rescue them because it He's didn't seem still, like on the radio like it was like that big of a deal guy is still relatively new to this too yeah yeah that's what we we're saying he said he just got it to see yeah and it was right first. yeah so. well that's why he so, was so yeah, timid on the throttle <laughs> right and i had, had a conversation yeah. with him after it because he was like what did i do wrong he like looked at me he's like what did i do wrong and i'm like okay so you're on leaf springs and you're following a bunch of guy on coil springs and i kind of went down that trail so he understands it and i and i wasn't like ripping on you know because i don't need travis to tear me a new one over there <laughs> uh, i'm like there's nothing wrong with leaf springs honestly they, they're really capable but they're not going to change um uh interaction with <laughs> landscape the way that a coil spring does or as quickly they react differently to, to get this so i like went down i explained it to him and when i explained it to him he was like that makes a lot of sense and i'm like i bet you what you did is you watched don go down that and you're like oh, i'm just gonna go where don went and his his axle went cattywampus like it's supposed to because he's disconnected and he was like oh that, that looked like nothing and he was like i'll go down it and all of a sudden his rear end went flying up in there and the front end went down he was like what happened <laughs> because you have to drive differently when you got leaf springs. So <clears throat> the other thing is keep in mind that he just took a 101 class and uh, all the guys he was willing with and even his own instructor drives a JK. So he's watching the lines as a JK would take the line and he's still doing it the same way 
But the suspension said if it's not the same, it's not going to recoil the same. Right. Right. Well, I was he was talking about like how do I do a mild lift on this? And I was like, well, you know, you've got stock uh, shackles, so you could do a shackle lift and just, you know, extend the shackle, get a two-inch extension on your shackle. You're not, you know, taking away the rigidity or, or you know, the 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 safety of that of that, and get an inch. Because if you do two inches of shackle, you get one inch of lift, and then you could fit the 32s that he wants to go up to and get like a more aggressive tire, which is, and that's as far as you're going to be able to go with that without having to regear and go crazy, and. Um, it kind of like you know he he saw that there was a way to go but he would need different knowledge to do it um i was hoping he'd be in here tonight because i mean he he's he'd be great to kind of like entering it you know later on and learning about how different what he's doing is from everything else i mean i did a four inch lift on my wagoneer because he's i'm like I've, I've got the same exact type of suspension on my wagoneer it's just a lot heavier and bigger and I'm not going to off-road it because I've got this fresh body on it, and I just got paint in that because it's going to be a show truck. But I know it, so I can I can talk to you about it. And I also want to send him pictures so you can see them that that, that uh, Google platform. I was just over at his house um, a couple weeks ago when we were going through his YJ because I actually have a YJ, and, and uh, he and I were talking about it as well. <laughs> but and I was like, yeah, just do a small two and a half inch lift, but get a good quality lift. Don't get you know. Uh, crap, um, change everything out to polyurethane bushings. Just really watch what you do. But he's also kind of like, well, I don't want to jump in this thing. So he's kind of trying to keep it low. So even a two and a half inch kit would do it pretty well and let it work and let it cycle through the system. I mean, but I've run, I've wheeled my wife J for 26 years or for over 10. But but Clint, can you still and call it a YJ? I mean, it, it was when it started. It's not truly really too much of a YJ now anymore, is it? <laughs> no, it's on links and tons and coilovers. <laughs> Clint is uh, a gentleman we uh, we interviewed uh, uh, back. Uh, I guess it was 2019, uh, right before the the Barnwell thing. Uh, Clint is uh, involved with uh, what is it? Clint is it Texas Land Management that? Uh, uh -huh. Texas Motorized Trail Coalition. Yeah, so uh, uh, we oversee we oversee Barnwell and EDRA. Is that the the new one you guys were working on at the time of the interview? It, yep, it's finally open. It's been open for about a year and a half. It's thirty six hundred acres. What's the name of it again? Whoa. Escondido Draw Recreational Area. It's uh, West Texas, just south of Ozona. Right. And that's what I thought because at, last week we were talking. I think so we got it confused with one that starts with an M out by Palo Duro. Right, I can't remember what the name of that one. Maris, Maris, yeah. So that, the, what you're talking about is not Maris. You're talking yeah. about no. Everybody. It's so Team TC One C Three. Um, we've been in business now for 22 years. We're actually because I, I realize you guys are all Texas guys, right? A lot of a lot them. of a lot of them. So um, we actually petitioned the state of Texas for monies and bought Barnwell Mountain 22 years ago. So we opened up that park. It's been in business for 20 years. And then we finally got everything approved and we opened up EDRA after working on it for 10 years. And we opened it a year and a half ago. So if you guys don't already know, Barnwell's over there kind of, uh, uh, it's kind of Thanks. parallel to Dallas. So it's, it's by, by me, about an, about an hour and a half west of Dallas or east of Dallas. Oh, that's not yeah. bad. Have you been there uh, before, Jimmy? Oh, yeah. Yeah, that's that's my, I just feel like going wheeling for the day and driving home at the end of the day. Spot. Yeah, you're lucky. That's that's, oh, my yeah. that's my hidden falls, right? That, that's, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, Clint's down here where I am, so he, he has a drive, but he has to tow his. How far, how far is uh, how far is Escondido then from what the Austin area? Like? <sighs> so from Houston, San Antonio is halfway. That's not too bad. About, about seven hours. Oh, that's yeah. Good. Yeah, it's, a, it's about six, six and a half hours from um, Dallas area. I think we looked it up because yeah. I was talking to Andrew because Andrew's out in Midland. Oh, is that and the one out of Ozona? Uh-huh. Ozona. Okay. Yeah, it, it's about an hour and a half, two hours from me. So I think it was six hours from you, Jimmy. Mm-hmm. So I, was, I was thinking about like that or um, Katimsi in November. Yeah, I think it was October when uh when I went up to Barnwell. Uh, and that, that was uh, it was cool enough outside. I was actually able to drive the XJ uh, all the way up there and all the way back without any issues. That's where I got to try out the uh, the Atlas. 
and the uh, and the rear locker. So that was uh, that was pretty cool. Now if I just learn how to uh, work the levers properly. Yeah, that's a problem. So I would uh, just want to mention real quick. Uh, I think uh, most everybody here knows we were talking about Hidden uh, Hidden Falls Adventure Park uh, for the uh, the Jeep Talk Show event uh, this past weekend, Saturday the eighteenth. Uh, but that's uh, that's the park that we were talking about, and uh, we we wheeled uh, all day Saturday, or most of us did, and uh, we were just uh, relating some of the things that happen out there, and uh, we got a bunch more people in here. You guys already uh, already heard Clint. Clint's down here in uh, my neck of the woods, and uh, just scanning through here to see. Uh, Travis did join. Travis, uh, I muted him because he had some sort of background noise. Probably had the TV on at the time. So hopefully he'll he'll jump in here in a second. Uh, there's uh, Doug R, which I think is uh, is new, and Christopher, which I, I think is uh, Christopher up in uh, Oklahoma. So uh, yep. the the one that didn't uh, take the time to drive down and join us at uh, the at the Damn. Event. Ouch! Ouch! I was, was trying brutal. to make Damn. death it's wobble this, well. death wobble that. <laughs> I didn't think they liked Oklahomans in Oklahomans in Texas. <laughs> you know, proceeds to play hooky for a day to go wheeling, but doesn't join us. Uh huh. <laughs> well, I, I think we were all just planning on joining in on a live fireside chat, and I never got I, a notification about that. Oh, out the Blame park, Josh. No, yeah, was, weren't you going to hook up to Starlink and you know? Oh, that's a future thing. Like whenever <laughs> you know, whenever uh, Spotify uh, pays us ten million dollars to do the show. <laughs> and Tony, yeah, you can hear me now. Okay. So I'm on my phone because I was at an event here. Um, it was a drag race event, but Did I didn't make it because I had death wobble and I'm not I know. driving I know. eight hours. Death wobble this, <laughs> death wobble that. <laughs> uh, actually, but, he was probably at drag week and then Rocky Mountain 2.0 was where he's at now. Yeah, that's where I'm at. <laughs> I left there. Coach, the sun's in my eyes. I mean, death wobble. Yeah, I got you. <laughs> but well, you I just missed fitting in. I picked the bushings this past weekend while you guys were having fun. <laughs> this is why you got to stay up on your maintenance there so you can be ready whenever there's an event. And it's not like we yeah, hadn't been talking about the event for two months prior. Come on. It says the person whose XJ isn't ready to roll yet. I, but I do have one that is ready. <laughs> right. Ooh. And this hey. didn't start until... I don't know, like three weeks ago, it sucked. And I didn't have the money to buy the stuff for it. So, yeah, it, it was just a it, very huge disappointment because I wanted to meet Josh, you, and everybody in the Zoom room. Well, it's not going to be the last one. And we did have a lot of people there from the Zoom room. Uh, and I think they were all put to work. <laughs> they were all put to work for the event. Yeah, that's what I heard. <laughs> yeah. So it was like, hey, I know these guys. Guess what? You do this, you do that, you do this. The important question, was there enough breakfast tacos? There yeah, was. Absolutely. <laughs> at, the, at the end of the day, we handed a, I had them in the cooler all day as we are going around and whenever I had to leave. Uh, I think like uh, Chris and, and uh, Josh grabbed like a couple of handfuls to take them back. Because they're wrapped in foil. You could throw them in the campfire or whatever you want. Right. Uh, yeah. Keep them back up. And, uh, yeah, they were, they were pretty good. They weren't my favorite. I had to get them at a different place because the place I normally get at, the earliest they could do is 8 a.m. pickup. And I had a 30 minute drive to get out there. So I um, mm. ended up getting them from a barbecue joint. And uh, so the brisket ones were good, but I didn't think the chorizo ones were that good. They were, they were only they, slightly. Yeah, they, they weren't, they weren't. And they, the hot sauce wasn't spicy. It looked good. Uh, it looked like it was homemade uh, hot sauce, Texas hot sauce. Yeah, it was decent, but it wasn't, uh, it wasn't my favorite, but it, it was still good. I mean, they were representative. What did Josh think? Did he tell you anything? Uh, no, uh, I don't recall him, uh, him mentioning that. Oh, uh, and you guys get ready because I did uh, get him a Whataburger, uh, while we were there. And, uh, when, uh, uh, Chris, uh, Chris, Josh and I actually went to uh, Whataburger for breakfast and I got a, a hamburger that they could try. Chris said he had already had one. I think John, you took him over there to, to Whataburger. Did. Okay. Somebody did. Exactly. Yeah, somebody did. And uh, like on uh, Friday or something. And uh, anyway, uh, so we're going to have a, 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 a rousing conversation between In N Out and Whataburger. LJ. Coming Whataburger. Up. <laughs> Charles saying hi to you, buddy. He can't hear you because you're on my earbuds, but he says, he says hi. Hi. If you go to If you go to Whataburger for breakfast, that's honey butter chicken biscuits. I mean, that's, that's what you get it. For I th- breakfast, I think, everybody, I think everybody got a platter, uh, one of those breakfast platters. Mm-hmm. Yeah, but that's just like low grade Denny's, right? If you get the platter, I mean, I'm 
<laughs> oh, I would have rather gone to an IHOP if there if there had been one around. There was some uh, breakfast place, uh, I mean, some place that uh, rated very high on the breakfast thing. We went over there first, and they had a line out the door in a 30-minute wait. So that's when we went to Whataburger. Blue Bonnet Cafe is where you probably That's it. Going. I think that's it. That's a, well, see, that's why I told you to go. We were asking about uh, lunch or something on Saturday, right? But they're cash only. So is that yeah. that was the one, huh? Well, I'm glad they yeah. were. I'm glad they were full because you know, screw them. I don't need to give them cash. But what they're really known for, I mean, it's just a diner, really. I mean, it's diner food. But what they're famous for is their pies. Like yes. if, you go, if you get one, like they got meringue stacked like eight inches high on top of a lemon meringue pie and whatever. It's it's really good. Well, Marlboro Falls is pretty nice. It's a pretty nice place. Uh, they got an H E B. They got a Walmart. I was surprised they had a Walmart. Uh, so uh, there was a, a lots of uh, lots of places there in town to, to go around. But I, I kind of wondered. Uh, there was actually there was several restaurants that had been closed permanently, and I figured it was because of the of the COVID uh, earlier uh, earlier on. I I would imagine that uh, Hidden Falls is a, a big uh, cash generator for many of those businesses. I know the Motel Six was rather nice. Good. How yeah, did uh, how did your dog enjoy it, uh, Larry? All right. So by the time we got back to the hotel, I helped him up in the bed because he was wore out. <laughs> and uh, poor guy went to get down and get a drink of water, and we have carpet. But when he jumped off the floor, his feet went everyone's direction. The head hit the floor. Oh. And uh, yeah, it was like, uh oh. He didn't like the heat, did he? At least oh, I was, no. I was glad it wasn't as hot as it normally is in September, right? So it wasn't really that bad. I was expecting it to be a lot worse. So <laughs> it really well, it wasn't too too bad. Intense, so and we're supposed to be like, and we're supposed to be getting a cold front uh, here in the next couple of days. Huh, there's the gladiator stuck. Yeah, yeah, I think you the, uh, guys want to see that that photo? Yeah, that, that's the uh, the gladiator we spent all that. There's Larry trying to winch him out, and the other right the chair on the way. The cold front already hit Midland, so y'all are going to get a yeah. nice little, nice so, little cool. So it's, when it comes. It, it's down to ninety, Aaron right? Also, it was. It's down to eighty right now. So I deep well, the jeep this afternoon. It's, it's, it's eighty. Falling. It's definitely falling. I'm sitting out in the back porch right now, and at lunchtime when I was out here, you couldn't be out here for more than thirty minutes without sweating. The humidity was so. I think it was like ninety eight and like eighty five percent humidity this afternoon. Yeah. So our, our high here in Oklahoma was uh, seventy eight. And right now it's 69. You're supposed to be but, getting that tonight. I mean, the whole cold front is supposed to come through here tonight. And then tomorrow, I think, like 7 a.m. or something like that, it's going to be in the 60s or whatever. So I'm excited about that. <laughs> By the it's way, it's amazing. It feels it's great. 59 here. By the way, Lacey says uh, she got her first Whataburger uh, that weekend as well. Jimmy, I can't believe you're not letting uh, Hook and Lacey up with the good stuff. I thought what? she's not. She's not from Texas. Not originally. I don't think. No, huh. no. L- Lacey's ori- uh, originally from California. What does she oh. deal with? Whatever. So she's she more. Escaped. She's an escapee. She's she's <laughs> not a transplant. Just like me, I am an escapee, not a transplant. So she's so she's more in and out than than Whataburger. I'm assuming. Lacey, oh, Lacey what is it? You've had a Whataburger now, so uh, what is it? In and out or Whataburger? Remember, you're you're in Texas. Five guys, man, escaping. No, it's always <laughs> Whataburger's answer. Always. <laughs> I agree. If, if Whataburger could figure out how to do a bunless burger and not like have this disassembled thing in a box and refuse to put any toppings on it, then I would do Whataburger. But they don't do that, and so it's in and out. No, number two with cheese. I got I got my wife yeah. one the other day. She was uh, last month. She was doing no bread the entire month, and uh, I fit, felt like having Whataburger. So I, I I asked them, and that they made it with a regular double meat Whataburger with everything but the bread. Right, but they don't wrap it. They just put it in the container, and they refuse to put oh, the mustard or the, mayo in the container. And you have to like argue with them to get mustard and mayo. It's the presentation. Okay. Well, no, because I can't pick it up. I have to use a fork and knife. Like, I don't want to eat a burger with a fork and knife. I'll do it in and out and just, like, pick it up and eat it instead of having to, like, uh, to eat my burger. That's a Salisbury well, steak. Lacey yeah, is, right? How do you make a burger without a bun? Lacey is not going to answer it. She says she's pleading the fifth, which I guess, I guess that means the five guys burger because the fifth uh, part of the statement. Right. <laughs> That's not bad. Five guys burgers are... 
No, Five Guys is all about the fries, right? I mean, that's, they do it. Yeah. I mean, that's what you get. Five Guys, you get small fry is enough to feed the whole family. Oh, right? yeah, you, yeah. Like, the, the, I really like the Five Guys uh, burgers. They are very good, but it's not the are. same thing as a as a Whataburger. There's a, a definite uh, difference in oh. taste. But I wouldn't say it, one is better than the other. It's just different. Uh, but, the, yeah, the fries are wonderful. Now, if you guys have never tried a BLT from Five Guys, uh, get one. Actually, you'll need more than one, uh, but, but they put so much bacon on there. It is really, really good. But they do around those here, up here. Around here, we have something called Mighty Fine burgers which is like an awesome thing mm-hmm. and they're all over the place around here low burger are really good no it's actually it's the old austin before it got <laughs> like it is now so most of them have moved out to the suburbs but no mighty fine is and mighty fine's on doordash which is even better uh yeah clint go right ahead of course whatever you want to do uh just uh you know no uh no uh, richard nixon picks no 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 no, hey guys. Uh, so, some of you Texas guys ever heard of Texas Full Drive? No. Yeah. I well, it's we're a statewide organization. Um, we've got chapters in Dallas, Houston, Sugarland, mostly Houston centric plus Dallas. Um, I do an event at Barnwell every year in October. The one that Tony was talking about just a little while ago. Um, I'm doing this is my 21st year of putting on the same event. And I do a raffle, I do a dinner, and just wheeling in a one-on-one class. It was huge. The, the one I went to was huge. But but where when in October? I'm, that's uh, like, this year it's going to be October 7th through the 10th. And my daughter's birthday is the 9th. <laughs> so, <laughs> it's like, can, do you, uh, can you, uh, do you do the online raffle, or do you have to be present to win? Or Yeah, it's yeah. present. Yeah. What a cheap... St- <laughs> <laughs> so is that north or south of Hidden Falls? North. It's up closer to Dallas. Okay. It's northeast. It's, it's It'd be like, closer uh, to you, Larry. Yeah, it's closer to you, Larry. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but about three hours, I would imagine, somewhere around there, depending I, on how bad 35 traffic is. I think uh, it's, it's, a, it's a little over three hours for me to get to, to uh, Hidden Falls, and it's a, a little closer to four hours to, for me to get to Barnwell. Yeah. From Houston, it's 250 miles. It's due east of me. Larry, <laughs> so I'm in, I'm I'm due east to Dallas. It's due east to me. It's straight out twenty for me. So you, you come down thirty five, hit Dallas, and go out twenty. Yeah, because from Dallas to here, I think that was probably around probably around ten hours for me. And it's an Jeez. hour and a half from Dallas to Barnwell. You didn't cut back across the uh, Indian reservation there on the way back, did you? No, I I looked at all the different routes, and I actually just figured well you know I, when i came through all that it was about five o'clock friday so i was in probably rush hour so i figured it was going to be sunday morning and it was it, it, it went pretty quick sunday morning i wanted to stay on ma- some kind of major road just in case because you never know what you know might have been hurt or broke on a trail so right how often do you have to stop for the dog um I try to stop like every other hour just to let him out, let me out. And it it goes pretty quick. By the time we got back, though, he just laid on the floor. And when he stretches out, he's over six foot. And he just laid on the floor, stretch and roll, stretch and roll, because he really can't stretch in the back seat. I thought that uh, ramp was cool. Yeah, he's too heavy to be lifting up in and out all the time. <laughs> <laughs> I need, I would need a hernia belt for that. Well, look, ladies, yeah, you guys, if you guys can make it, it's on Facebook. It's a big Facebook event. Um, probably, I mean, we have around 150, 100 to 150 people every year. And the last, this raffle, so far I've got six grand worth of stuff to give away. The last one that Tony went to, I had 10 grand worth of stuff to give away. Oh, it was a bunch of stuff. A whole bunch of stuff. Hey, do y'all ever you ever come out or do any work with uh, AJP, the Austin G people? I don't. I don't know anybody with them. Um, with with our with our club, we've always been inclusive of others. And if if like AJP is putting on something, we'll promote it. We only promote the wheeling events, not so much the social stuff. Um, parking lots or parking lots. Well, no, they do a, the reason I was asking, I was telling Tony about it too. They do a huge event in Marble Falls every year. The called, Polar Bear Run. Yeah, the Polar Bear Run, exactly. And that's, that's about the same thing. There's like 150, 200 Jeeps out there. Exodus shows up. I mean, you've got all kinds of people that are out there. 
Yeah, it usually falls on a bad weekend for me. Um, and I've never been able to make it. Um, like some of these events, they're, they're always, I mean, like when I started doing this 20 years ago, nothing was happening in October. Nobody did anything. And now it's like everything. There's a Wheelers for the Wounded event. There's the, um, this crawl, that crawl, this invasion. And it's like, okay, it, it gets really stacked up. Yeah, yeah. I've, been, I've been out there for it a few times and it's it, it's it's crowded so if you're going out there to wheel eh, it's there's gonna be a lot of waiting in line right so. at, at barnwell though you can kind of spread out and get her and get away from all that crap though yeah if you just go to uh, that that bar section i don't know is that south the south section of barnwell they kind of like way down the part the end of the park road not a lot of people tend to venture down there no, out by uh, Camp Maybe is the one you're talking about. Yeah, yeah. I can't, out. I can't remember what direction that was, but I know. Yeah, way down there. I've never it's been where, where Lacey's Titan likes to uh, pitch a fit. Oh, sh shut up! <laughs> <laughs> Your <a> story there <laughs> isn't that supposed to be shut up, shut up, shut up? Well, oh, yeah. <laughs> So loud. Shut up, shut up, shut up. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> Jimmy, Jimmy, I got that issue fixed. <laughs> yeah, after that time, yeah. I think I think Jimmy's the next one to be fixed from the sound of that. <laughs> <laughs> I've, been, I've been poking at Lacey forever about this. Because, like, with the first three times we went out, the, like, two of the times we were at Barnwell, you went into limp mode to do different, for, to do different reasons. No, no, no. Well, the first time we went to one. Hidden Falls. We went to Barnwell and you had the problem. And then we went to Hidden Falls and you had that problem too. I can't remember what it was. We were coming up. Uh, you were overheating. It was anything. still the throttle. The throttle. I was still okay. having problems with the throttle. <laughs> so so yeah. it's, it's, it's an inside joke and she, she, she wants to shoot me for it. I, I have replaced that sensor. So we're good. That's okay. That same day at Barnwell Mountain, when she had that problem, I spent the entire day because it was like my first day out with after I did the big build with my tons and I never locked my front hubs until finally I got stuck on a hill. And they were all like, why are you spinning tires so much with those tires? You didn't have them locked? Because I was in one wheel drive. Oh, God, I hate that. That's what happened to me at Barnwell. And it was front wheel drive, too. <laughs> That's awesome. So we used a lot of uh, Travis-isms, I think we can call them. On the radio. <laughs> How many times on the radio did you hear, shut up, shut up, shut up? That's right. That's so right. loud. Tra Travis, <laughs> Travis was there in spirit. <laughs> You're so, so loud. Nikki G. <laughs> Travis was uh, with Nikki G. Calling. Yeah. yeah, Nikki G was uh, spoken of as well. That's right. Yes. I think, I think at least one time I said, but that's not why I'm calling. <laughs> I tried it was to a pretty a, perfect one. I tried to drop the I'm allergic to pineapple one, but I just I couldn't pull it off. <laughs> Nobody laughed. No uh, no whale songs. So whale <laughs> songs would have been good. Yeah, there's Nikki G. Yeah. He's here. <laughs> Speak to the devil. How long of a so drive you is it? Wheeling, didn't you? How long a drive is it uh, from uh, from your neck of the woods, uh, Nikki G, to, to Texas? Oh, gosh. Uh, I, I don't know. I've never. I, I, I'd say at least eight, 18 hours, if not more. Oh, so it's it's you, doable. You probably need a passport. Not in the, not in the next year. <laughs> Where do you live? In North Carolina. Where uh, I middle of whenever it. I was living out in North Carolina, I lived out on the in Jacksonville on the coast, and it was a 21-hour drive straight through on the Jeez. interstate. Yeah, that, 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 that's a week-long trip in the next year. I did it a bunch of times in the next year. That's all I've pretty much ever owned. <laughs> uh, I'm pretty sure I won't have any uh, fillings left when I get there. It wasn't as old as what his is now. That's <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's a long, slow drive. Who drove down from Michigan? That was Willie Wagon. Yeah, uh, Chris. Yeah. Chris flew in, and then uh, Willie Wagon and his wife uh, drove down. Uh, they towed their jeep on a trailer. Uh, there well, I have a picture of Willie Wagon. I need to get to him. Uh, he's like full one tire in the air um, on FMTRO. 
Like, and not just a couple inches. It's a good half foot or plus off the ground. So, did you hear about him doing that rescue when we were right before we went out there to uh, before we went to North Pole? Somebody keyed on the the radio that they needed a uh, a high lift um, to go out there, and basically he just took off. They were out on West, I think, of the trail, and so he kind of walked up and was like, "Hey, if y'all go out again, just so you know, I'm going to go help them." He came back. He said their their disconnect link, their sway bar disconnect. He disconnected but he didn't i don't know if he bungeed or whatever but he didn't really tie it up out of the way enough and so he got his suspension kind of bound up and that link kind of just jammed in somewhere oh and no yeah it was causing him so he had to go out there with like a high lift is what he was asking for but Push yeah he went, out and, he went out and rescued somebody like while we were out playing on north beak and north pole and then had to catch yeah, up yeah he was he was great like, we didn't have, i don't think anyone had to spot him the entire day uh, he, he looks like he's got quite a bit of experience yeah, it's just like, you know, when I go out with Lacey, I don't really spot her. I just kind of like occasionally say, hey, drift to the, the driver a bit. And that's all she needs. You know, Willie's been, wheel, been out wheeling been out wheeling with uh, Tammy and the crew also. Oh, has he? Yeah. yeah. He's, he's come down to North Carolina before. And then on Sunday, he and I went wheeling together Sunday morning, and he w- wanted to try the hill that... uh Jimmy and Lacey did, and so we got up to the first step, and he got up and started looking, and he goes, you know, I got a wheel next weekend, and he took the bypass on me, but <laughs> that would have been interesting for him to see. Oh, that's a hell of a picture right there, Jimmy. Yeah, I, I need to get his email so I can send his stuff to him. Well, that is a really good one. Was that that same hill? That was, that that was, was a fun hill. <laughs> that, was, that was the famous YJ... Peter Cottontail, I think was the name he got. That was the hill. Mm-hmm. <laughs> oh, and uh, by the way, I think Guy is going to be joining us. He probably just didn't know about uh, the the Tuesday night thing yet. But I think he's uh, – uh, uh, who was it? Was it you, Andrew, that he said he was going to figure it out? Somebody was trying to explain to him how the Zoom meeting worked. Yeah, I, I told him how to figure it out and how to join it, but <laughs> so we'll see. So we can give him all kinds of crap uh, maybe this uh, this coming Thursday. Absolutely. Make him so, feel like I, one of the group. <laughs> I was gonna, I was gonna ask you guys because we just ran Hidden Falls in January. I ran it with. I'm on tons and forties. I was with another guy on forty twos and tons, and I mean we were some big old, you know, big boys. And did you guys find that there was a lot of stuff that, like, we just couldn't do at all? I, um, well, I we think did, there's only did. two things out there that are difficult. Um, at least that's what I've been told. I haven't had any problems with any of the stuff I've been on uh, out there with the with the gladiator, and you know what the the departure angle on it is horrible. Right. Well, like even we ran North Pole, and everybody's always like, you know, you get to the ledge, and we had to go all the way to the right to get up because even on big tires, that ledge was just completely rotted out. You couldn't get any action to get up it at all. Yeah, at Lacey and I were went right up it. Yeah, but y'all, y'all went from the left, and then y'all took the ledge to the right, and then went all the way up the right on the, on the third step. Yeah, that's what he's talking about. Like, unless you're in a rock bouncer, you're not going to make it on the left, full left. No, not on the left. I couldn't just say it's nothing. so undercut that you you just there's nothing to grab onto. Looks well, like right. also, if you go to Loose Rock, I think that trail. So when we got there and we were in the staging area, area B, you can look up on the side of Wildcat, and you saw a I think it was a I'm rock bouncer or a buggy. That was stuck on the side where they had left it from the night before when it flipped. Yeah, yeah. I heard, I heard yeah, they had rolled a, yeah, they had loose, a whole group out there trying to ride it and get it out of the get it out of there. And loose rock. It's not crazy. It's just it, the reason why it's called that is because there's just so much gravel. So when you get on the ledges, it's you, you gotta you, you gotta gas it or whatever to get up. It's not really. Crawling. Well, and then what's funny is I was talking to some other smaller tire guys. And we had talked about, and we're like, yeah, what, you know, what trails did y'all run? And we ran FNTRO with just me and two other guys. We ran from start to finish. We ran that entire trail with all the ledges in about 45 minutes. But we only ran half of it. I think we, we kind of skipped the, like the rock garden piece and everything else. We got kind of, because the, the, the trail entrance was really grown up. And so we kind of went to the left and we ended up on, was it Valley Road or something? Yeah. Right, right after the squeeze, I think we were supposed to go straight, and we went left. Right, and uh, that's that's where I think I missed it because I was trail leading on that 
And I did the same thing last time we did it too, because I couldn't find it. And then it dumps out and acts like you're on a, on a, a buggy trail, uh, not a buggy trail, a side-by-side -side trail. And I was yeah. like, there was no other direction to go that wasn't the way I went. To that's, get the out. One, yeah. that's the one issue with that involves. The trails aren't marked excellently. Yeah. Right? So. They haven't been for 10 years. Mm -hmm. um, we yeah, still have, I still have the problem at Barnwell that. too. That area we went up and we, after we went to the squeeze, we went to the right. That was a pretty fun little area to go up. But you mean the left? We went like you go through the squeeze. And yeah, his up. other his other right. His other right. Because <laughs> if we'd have gone straight right there, I think that's. But like you said, Jimmy, like you look straight ahead, that it was the creek bed, but there was it was really grown up between there. I think a lot of people have been making that same mistake and hadn't driven on that part in a while. But right. because there was so much, stuff, I've watched a lot of videos on FMTR before we went out there. I was like, I don't see any of the stuff that I was watching on the videos that was showing the boulder gardens and everything else. We, we kind of bypassed all that. Um, and you guys said you saw a group that was totally tangled up in there anyway. So we would have turned into hours on there. Yes. If, if we had actually gone oh, yeah. through it. They were winching in like hell when we passed them on the right, on the left, and they were on our right in the creek bed. And I think that's what makes it take so long, right? Because you get you can get tangled up in there pretty quick with groups, and then you're waiting and and everything else. But I mean, so, have you have you guys um, have you guys ever heard about Stillwater Ranch? No. No, that sounds familiar. Or to Stillwater, Oklahoma. Maybe that's what <laughs> no, I'm thinking. Stillwater Ranch is outside of Lano. Oh yeah, I've heard of it. I know Lano. Yeah, they got go. a barbecue there. It's pretty good. Uh, yeah, <laughs> Cooper is in Lano. <laughs> that was it. Stillwater Ranch. Is it open to the public or is it like private property or what? Six times a year it's open and it's only forty bucks for the weekend. Is there camping out there or is it just wheeling? Yep. To go you stay. Up? You stay at. Uh, you stay at a campground. Um, the campground is the camping's pretty cheap too. Um, and then you line up at nine o'clock in the morning you have a driver's meeting then it's a 20 minute dirt road to get back to the property you're on the property you wheel around and everybody off the property by 6 p.m oh that looks awesome i'm looking at pictures on google right now pretty good obstacles i mean it's not just flat. oh yeah oh yeah <laughs> well that's what i was i was wanting to get feet wet um because i, I do want to do i think Tasha said too we want to do the event in easter jeep safari in moab moab uh, I've never been out there, but uh, Jimmy was telling me that he's been to, was it Katimsi or, or is it K2? Well, Katimsi uh, is Wolf Caves. Wolf Cave. No, I'm talking about K2, which is, which is on the other side yeah. of Wolf Cave. Um, I like it. I haven't been to, I haven't been to Wolf Cave because I don't necessarily want to get into that with, I usually don't wheel with people that ri have rigs like mine. So, and I don't want to tear up other people's Jeeps. Honestly, I don't want to tear mine up. I still got really virgin sheet metal on mine. So. So yeah, Wolf Caves is problem, body damage. The only problem with K2 is that it's only open very few times a year. And Wolf Caves is open every weekend. That's true. Well, well, K2 is a is a working, you know, cattle ranch. It, yeah. And they let you off-road on it. Yeah, so still water. Right. I wasn't too fond of K2. What was the problem with it? What didn't you like? I just don't, I didn't like the terrain. I mean, that weird lava rock, and it was just like a rock in the middle of desert-ish. What it was like red desert with a mound of rocks here, and then a mound of rocks there, and then a mound of rocks there. And it's like, why? This just makes no sense. It's rough. Is it? I was just thinking about a primer for, you know, before you go out and try to tackle, you know, Pritchett Canyon or something you know trying it out that may be a little aggressive for somebody on 35s but you know mm, i mean moab is actually really easy to do in most capable rigs you don't want to do a run first canyon in 35s but most of it you can do we're do top of the world that's the one i've always wanted to do just that one was easy yeah, it was yeah i'm ready to go out there so far every every ride i've had this year to go out to moab has all fell through well, I think we're wanting to do something big next summer. I was my my Hannah wants to go back, Jimmy. So I figured if you were bringing LJ, it'd be perfect. But um, we have Colorado or Moab. I mean, either one, right? I'm just saying if we're going in like July, August, 
you're probably thinking more Colorado, right? Because I would think more right. Like, yeah, Colorado or <laughs> even go go even further up north, go Utah or or something like that. Or Cal- well, that's yeah. what I was me- messaging Tony with today. Always make a trip up to to see Windy and do Big Bear and all those trails, or go a little farther north and go to the Rubicon. Well, Rubicon would be fun. I've I've always wanted to do that. I don't know if well, if I'd take the the little one out on that first time I tried it though, but. <laughs> <laughs> seems like it could be an adventure is she is she not a, a camper i think she would be but she's never done it like she likes the idea uh, of camping but she's she's never camped and um you know they're, they're very fond of air conditioning hotels oh God, yes. beds. so i don't know how she would do to the you know yeah bag you, get, you have to pass that i think from from my experience with the girls that are now now in um scouting um the big thing once you get them past the lack of AC is getting them past the lack of a flushing toilet. <laughs> that could be that could be big as well, right? You know when but, you get when you got up when you get up at uh, you know one forty five in the morning and you got to go pee and you have to walk uh, two hundred feet to get to the bathroom, you uh, you notice those things. But that's why I kind of wish she was out there with us this past weekend because see Lacey out there driving and stuff like that. Because all she ever sees is you know old guys that are grumpy right. yeah they're oh, jeeps around because i gotta, so, gotta walk I, so far to go pee <laughs> i can't tell you how many times they've actually been over the rubicon um but one of the memories that i've got is because normally the guys that i used to go whaling with out there hey I, I was usually the only female on the trip and i, I just remember unzipping my tent in one morning and i look out and all the guys are standing out there next to buck island lake and their tidy whities washing up in the morning and i'm like oh, this is not what i signed up for. <laughs> i'm in hell <laughs> that, <laughs> stuff like I that's, up for? <laughs> that, that, that's where you got to have the right group going right so that's why i was saying you know jimmy brings the fam or whatever maybe i don't know, i just want to go out there with people especially not you mean hey dude you we can there. do the rubicon my family accomplished campers barb came with camping equipment <laughs> lj's been camping since he was three so camping for us not a big deal the hard part for us is because there's three of us in the jk and now i'm going to put the tire inside the spare inside i'm not going to have a lot of space for storage right well and i'm not, probably not, running, not running around in tight and whitey so time to, no. <laughs> time to- <laughs> commando no, don't answer that. Oh. So <laughs> don't. Uh, it's time to get one of those little trailers to tour around. Well, guys, I'm going to wrap this thing up. It's uh, been a little bit over an hour. A great conversation, and thank you everybody for for joining in. I think we had uh, 16 people join the uh, the the Zoom meeting eventually. If you if you don't know uh, the what we're doing here is we have uh, the Jeep Talk Show, which is a a podcast that we've been doing for 10 years. And uh, you can uh, listen to it on many places. That, I mean, if you just look for podcasts, you can find it uh, anywhere you can uh, listen to a podcast. Uh, we'll be recording again uh, this Thursday. So if you'd like to join in and be part of the, uh, the Zoom meeting uh, during that time, you can. It's, it's kind of like this, except uh, we're, doing, we're recording the show and everybody in the Zoom meeting is talking to each other and not paying attention to us, which is okay because that means we get downloads. Uh, I want to thank everybody for for joining in. Uh, Clint, glad you could join in and uh, uh, talk a little bit about Barnwell and the uh, the other park that I've already uh, brain farted on. Uh, but uh, you guys uh, should try out uh, uh, Barnwell, especially you folks that are over there closer to it. Um, so again, uh, this Thursday, uh, just a couple of days, we'll be recording, uh, the next episode of the Jeep talk show. And, uh, hopefully, uh, if you haven't been listening to the show, uh, like, uh, Lacey, I don't think Lacey's uh, heard the show. Hopefully you give it a try. This episode, uh, will be uh, put out tomorrow, uh, and, uh, uh, in, in advance of the, uh, the next episode of the Jeep talk show. So it'll be a, a special round table, uh, episode. So I want to thank you guys for being here tonight, and uh, we'll uh, we'll let everybody jump in, wrap it up, and uh, uh, have a good night. He was no, no he, was he hasn't sold out yet. Yeah, I'm hoping I'm in one of those. Right, I have I've been. Um, yeah, so I didn't you see are, you in any you pictures. Are in, uh, see, they're already typing their own conversation. This is what happens in the uh, the Zoom meeting. Anyway, you guys have a great night. <laughs>